At the NRA National Sporting Arms Museum at Bass Pro Shops in Springfield, Missouri, you can see the guns of presidents and kings, uh, Old West lawmen and outlaws, shooting champions, Hollywood stars, but one of our most treasured artifacts belonged to one of America's founding fathers, Alexander Hamilton. One of the reasons the powder horn is so important is because that Alexander Hamilton was George Washington's aide-de-camp. And since it was his motivational tool, uh, it had his mission statement on it, it was something that he carried around all the time. So when he met George Washington or uh, any of the other uh, notable luminaries of the revolution, uh, he also had it on it. The importance of the horn is that it's not a typical horn. Usually a horn would have uh, something, it could be plain, it would have the owner's name on it, uh, maybe the date. But this one deals in abstract symbolism and it has symbols on it that were important to the motivation of Alexander Hamilton and his achievement of uh, his rise to success. Hamilton was born in 1757 uh, and he lived in Nevis for eight years and then he moved to St. Croix. Uh, in 1769 he wrote a letter to his friend Ned Stevens that he could no longer exist in his life as a just a clerk and he would give anything other than his honor to uh, succeed. In fact, he ends the letter with saying, I wish there was a war. He was trying very much to get off the island, and he wrote to a, a person who also worked for Kruger, which was the company he worked for. Uh, he was based in New York, and he made the friendship of a, a man called Hercules Mulligan. He met with Hercules Mulligan, uh, and he began to learn a lot of things about um, America and um, you know how to how to achieve his results basically. Hercules Mulligan was a very important factor in Hamilton's success. He was an Irish tailor and back then if you were an officer in the army, in the militia or in the British Army or in the Navy uh, you had to have your uniform handmade. It was, uh, you got a uniform allowance, you didn't get it from the army. So all of the uh, important officers, British and American, uh, went through the, uh, Hercules Mulligan to get their uniforms and therefore he got a lot of gossip from it and he began to know a lot of uh, military officers. One of the first things that they did uh, as a militia was they raided the uh, fort at the southernmost part of Manhattan and when they did that uh, Alexander Hamilton gave his weapons to Hercules Mulligan to hold. As they were getting ready to leave Hamilton rushed out and there was a huge bombardment from the ships in the harbor. There were um, there was fire, there were cannonballs, uh, the place was going up in smoke and everybody was fleeing. Hamilton asked Mulligan, where are my weapons? And Mulligan said he, he left them inside. So Hamilton turned around and went back inside to get them. Which raises a very important question. Uh, one of them is, why did he bother going inside to get his weapons? I mean, he was risking his life to do so. The other thing is, they just raided the armory and they got the finest English weapons around, the, uh, the rifles, the uh, pistols, anything you could possibly want. So why did he have to go back and get his powder horn and his rifle? Alexander Hamilton used his philosophic background and his friendship with Mulligan uh, to advance his career in a very unique way. Uh, if you look in the history books, you find out that Hamilton had an artillery company at the beginning of the American Revolution, which was about 50 men. And it says that one day he went out and got them all uniforms. Now, at this point in his life, Hamilton had practically no money at all, uh, and he had no plan for advancement. So why would he spend his last penny on uniforms, and why was that so important? That's when we find out that George Washington 
was very impressed by his own uniform, which is something he wore during the French and Indian War. Uh, in fact, some say that he gave it almost a magical um, appearance. Uh, twice he was shot at and the bullet went through the fabric of the uniform but did not wound Washington. So he was very attached to his uniform and he was very disappointed when he took over the leadership of the American army and found out it was very ragtag. There were just farmers and merchants and people who had no uniform whatsoever. So what Hamilton did was he prevailed upon his friend Mulligan and they created almost 50 of these uniforms. So I believe it was the battle when uh, George Washington was leaving New York or was, was uh, retreating from New York that uh, Hamilton was on the uh, side of the hill and his artillery company was providing cover. At that point, Washington could see that all of Hamilton's men were dressed in this uniform. So not only was Washington very impressed by the fact that they had a uniform, but it was his uniform. If you look at George Washington's uniform, it's a blue coat with a uh, buff around the edges. It had a buff vest, buff pants. Uh, Mulligan exactly recreated George Washington's uniform and dressed Hamilton's artillery in the same uniform. So psychologically, when George Washington saw that this unit dressed in his own uniform, the only unit in the entire American army that had a uniform like that, uh, he had to speak to Washington, uh, I'm sorry, to, uh, to Hamilton. And the reason this was important was that for Alexander Hamilton's plan to succeed, he wanted to be on the general staff of the army. Once he was in the center of the general staff, he got to meet all of the generals, all of the uh, important people in America, and during the winter time, when there wasn't much fighting going on and there were social interactions, it was these interactions that allowed him to make friendships and really form political attachments, which greatly enhanced his career and also enabled him to marry Elizabeth Schuyler, uh, the daughter of General Schuyler, who also happened to be one of the most important politicians and wealthiest people in America. Alexander Hamilton actually reached the shores of America in 1773 and died in 1804. So it was about 30 years that uh, he had an active uh, life in the political arena. And during that time, uh, and I'll just pick 10 things, uh, he accomplished quite a bit. Any one of them I think would be a great accomplishment standing on their own. He was a delegate to the Constitutional Convention, the founder of the Federalist Party, the aide-de-camp of George Washington, a founder of the Bank of New York, a founder of the Society of Cincinnati, co-author of the Federalist Papers, a founder of the New York Post, first treasurer of the United States, a successful New York attorney, and the Major General of the United States Army. One of the prominent symbols is a uh, unicorn which has a sank foil uh, engraved on the uh, hindquarters of the animal. A sank foil is a uh, five-petaled uh, flower or rose which was on the coat of arms of Hamilton. So the unicorn itself is a symbol for hopes and aspirations. That's uh, how he starts out. And then we uh, reach a point where in Sir Francis Bacon's book, he says there are four things that you have to achieve if you're going to get fortune. Now the first of these uh, is an amendment of the mind. You have to psychologically uh, overcome any impediments of the mind. So what Hamilton put on the horn at that point was, first one came to Ohio which is a symbolic phrase uh, reminiscent of the uh, Odyssey or the Iliad where the uh, hero returns from the war. 
It's also, if you look at the sentence structure, it's very elegant and reminds you of like when in the course of human events or we the people. It's the same type of sentence structure first when came to Ohio. Uh, the second part is wealth and means. That's represented by a um, house and a fence around it and uh, to Hamilton who was at that point a 16 year old living in St. Croix, uh, if you had a house like that, that was wealth and means. Uh, the third one is honor. Uh, he represents that by the, again, by the cinq foil, the five-petaled flower. And the last symbol has to deal with reputation. And for Hamilton, he was going to achieve his stardom and reputation uh, in the artillery. So the symbol itself looks like cross cannon, but the uh, circle around it and the cannons themselves are formed of fasces, which are uh, bundles of sticks that are wrapped up, which are the Roman symbols for the rule of law. Uh, you see those on the Senate floor uh, flanking the uh, speaker, and you see it also in the back of the old dimes. Uh, they're fasces and they have a, um, and some of them have an ax in the center of them. Uh, so these are the symbols that uh, Hamilton chose to represent and they would remind him constantly of what his goal had to be. Um, he didn't have what you might call an exit strategy. Um, he had to succeed. So unlike other founding fathers who might have gone back to their plantation or um, sought employment elsewhere, uh, he couldn't go back. Uh, he would rather die than go back to the islands and be a clerk. Uh, 